If you heard about last month's gang rape of an Indian woman, you were not alone. You were also not alone if word of her death angered you or left you questioning how such an occurrence could happen. The surge of a social media outcry urged India policymakers to change something, anything. Despite the international upheaval from the last gang rape incident, another woman was gang raped this past weekend. She, however, survived. The stories of these two women are eerily similar, both happening in India, both raped by multiple men, and both beginning on buses. Asra Namani, a journalist and author of Standing Alone, an American woman's struggle for the soul of Islam, said this chain of rapes is nothing new. She considers herself a daughter of India and said she can relate to these crimes because she too has been a victim in the country where she was born. We have this phenomenon there called Eve teasing where it's been considered funny to harass and hassle women on the street, to touch them, to feel them, to even rape them. I myself, while I was traveling, was assaulted a couple times. And uh, you know, I think it's an amazing moment right now because nobody's laughing anymore. Nomani says the recent rapes and the victims' stories have gone viral only to awaken a new movement to address the issue of rape and the role women play in fighting back. This is a turning point for the country and for women all over the world, and Nomani says an awakening is beginning to take place. The country has woken up, and with the country, the world is also awakening to this problem in far-flung destinations around the world. And so it's a really important moment for women everywhere and men also uh, because ultimately if you treat women like this, you know, like commodities and objects and, uh, and targets of predatory behavior, uh, everybody suffers. Because India is based on a code of shame and honor, Nomani believes this changes the way that rape cases are handled. Instead of blaming the victim, a slow change has begun to focus shame away from the victim and towards those who actually commit the crime. And so to protect her honor and her family's honor, women haven't come forward, they haven't pressed charges, they haven't stood up for their rights. So what's phenomenal right now is that the tide has turned. It's now the criminals who are being held responsible for being a shame on society. The way these two stories have broken so quickly and on such an international level is in part because of social media. Asra Nomani says social media has created global activism against injustice towards women and is only helping women to push for policy changes. I think social media revolution has uh, increased the rate of uh, response to these acts of violence. It's you know taken to the world stage to protest. It's um, helped organized people on the far corners of India, and so I think the media has been really an important element of the activism that has been that's happened here. When Nomani would return from journalism assignments in India, she told me that she still remembers the release of fear she would experience when she would leave India and come back to America. Nomani said this fear makes her much more understanding of what these women have gone through and how she needs to be able to speak on their behalf. You know, I remember now when I would come back to America, I would just breathe easier. Like We have a problem here with sexual assault. We have a problem with rape. Uh, we are by no means um, immune from any of these dynamics that, you know, threaten women and others from predatory behavior. But I, it made me really realize how much we impinge on women's rights and mobility and freedoms in society when they have to live under fear. After this weekend's rape, seven men involved, including the bus driver, were arrested and are awaiting charges. Whether you think social media and international outcry or India's government is the one to praise, Asra Nomani was right in saying, regardless, no one is left laughing. For Florida's 89.1 WUFTFM, I'm Leah Harding.